Good morning. I'm loading up another transfer tank of fuel. Getting ready to head to Berkey. Dad and I are going to go together this morning. Uh, I think Phil's already down there hauling in the rest of those beans. we got to get the combine ready and get everything switched over to corn. Okay. I brought my fertilizer recommendation sheets with me down here because I've been trying to get stuff lined up for Waldron, which I just got off the phone with him and think that's all going. I've also got the stuff coming for the Berkey bean ground that we just finished yesterday. We're going to try and get trucks unloaded. Oh, there's Phil. Okay. Okay, the trucks are empty. That's the last of the beans to go through the pit. So Phil just now has to get our overhead empty, and there's probably two and a half loads up there. Um, so plus he's got a truck he's just leaving now, so he's got four trips to make yet. It's going to take him a little while. All right, next up, we're going to attempt to get these wagons stuffed in the barn. I'm on the stones. We got the four-wheel drive on already, Brock. This wagon's not as heavy. What? Go. Go, Dad says. Go, go, go. Go, go, go. Don't get stuck. Keep her rolling. Keep her rolling. Oh, we're golden. Good. We're good. Get on the concrete. Get on the concrete. Made it. That's how it's done. Y'all see that wagon perfectly placed in the corner there? I did that. I don't know how I did it, but I did it. So we got one in, I'll go get the other one. That one was dang near first attempt. I only had to pull ahead like once. Okay, now we just have to get the big one in, uh, right in the middle there, and uh, I gotta get moving. I'm gonna hook up to it with this truck. We'll see what happens. But I think we might have to pull backwards and then get a running start at it. There's no way this is gonna work. Yeah, that didn't work. Okay, uh, let's try and pull it backwards. Okay, I'm gonna try and film this a little better. We did get it to move. We got it to move some. I think we might put the both trucks on the front. We're moving. Keep moving. Get in the door. Oh, Ford's doing it. We're barely getting a tug from the Chevy. Oh, we're gonna make it now. Okay, wagon's in the barn. Well, that was an adventure. Sorry you didn't get to see it very good. Stop, dude. All right, so now positioning this, we gotta make sure we're not under any uh, skylights or vent fans. We're pretty good there. I think I might pull it ahead just a little bit farther because there's another one here and we're not quite centered between them, so we got it. Okay, time to get the combine moved. So we gotta drop the bean head, check oil, all that stuff, take it back, and we gotta fuel it up and get everything switched over to corn, which does not take very long. But I got a little more and we're gonna do this time than what I have done, so I'll show you that when we get back to the farm. Nasty. Bean dust is the worst too. Corn's not so bad. It's still dusty, but it's not as bad as bean dust. Well, I guess Dad's gonna take the bean head. I was gonna leave it here because this is a pretty decent spot to get out of the field, but that's fine. Um, all right, back to the farm for fuel and changeover. All right, so uh, there's some spacers right here, and these are the this is the back half of the rotor, the separator grate. So it's not really doing a threshing here. It's just supposed to separate the grain from the trash and the rest of the stuff. And on corn, you're supposed to take these spacers from the top and put them in here in between. 
I don't do it when we're just switching back and forth all the time because this takes time, but now that we're really done with beans and the rest of it's corn, I'm going to put those spacers in. Should help keep the little pieces of cob out a little bit better and help keep stuff from breaking up and just move right through the back of the rotor. It gives a little more clearance. So that's the, the biggest difference from what we normally do. Something like that. Now we put our covers back on and we're waiting for fuel still and then we're ready to go. It's so slow. I believe on that trips it's a 200, but we were almost empty, so it's probably gonna need 300. So we'll let her pump for a little bit. We got a little work to do to uh, get the grain system ready to go. Just put some spouts on the bottom of some of these uh, downspouts or little extensions. So I'm gonna go do that. Oh, these are uh, man-sized steps here. You gotta, there you gotta hoof it. They're tall. All right, so we gotta open the lid here. And then uh, clamp that extension on the end of the downspout so it doesn't spill. All right, well, you can see our corn pretty good up here. You can see some of it's laying sideways. I think that's mostly tops broken off. Over there, it kind of looks maybe a little bit more down, but for the most part, it's standing okay. We are getting some wind today, though. We got to get this corn out. Uh, that field over there is all ours, and then clear across the road over there. That's all the corn that we've got to do down here. There's about 285 acres, so uh, we're going to get to it here. I think we're going to take endros off of this field, but then we're going to jump over to that one because that one there is harder to get trucks out, and the ground conditions aren't too bad. It's dried up right now. If we get some rain later in the week and we're not done, we can park trucks right in our driveway here and load them and stuff so we don't have to worry about getting them out of the field. Okay. Well, our fuel tank did not, we didn't get it full. We got it almost full. Uh, our tank ran empty, which is fine. We got plenty for today. There is still some in that tank that we brought down on the pickup truck, so we'll put that in later too after we run for a while. Time to go hook up to a corn head. Got it. We gotta go make our PTO connection. Hydraulic, electrical, single point, and let our snout set down. Then we can shell corn. We're doing it! Back in corn. Do we believe that? Not for a second. Not on Endros here. No way. This is 300 bushel corn. We're going to have to do a little calibrating. All right, I did what I wanted to do here, got Endros opened up. We are going to uh, empty the cart into a truck and load it into a dryer bin just so we can make sure everything's running and then we'll go over to the next field and get rolling. Oh, it's all working there. We're loading the big GSI dryer there, so. Uh, Jack and Dad are gonna finish emptying it. I'm gonna take the combine over to the next field. Uh, I think I'm probably gonna run the combine long enough to open this field up and then jump in the cart. Dad just doesn't like running it. He doesn't know how the computer stuff works in it, so yeah. All right, we're getting this field opened up. This is the field where we have to take all the trucks out through one spot there. So we're gonna pound the crap out of these ends here. We're just seeing the ground's not in terrible shape. We've done it when it's been much worse here. Uh, that said, we still don't wanna get a truck stuck and would like to do a decent job of not destroying the end rows here. So we're getting enough room to be able to turn around and everything and uh, yeah, figuring this out. Well, we finally have got most of the ends done, or at least enough that we can get started in through the field here. Uh, you can definitely see the tops breaking out of this corn. It's very brittle, but it is standing. It's not down to the point where I can't get it. It's just a lot of trash going through the combine because all those tops just break off when the ears hit the uh, deck plates on the corn head, and then it all comes through. And So we gotta drive a little slower and try and separate the grain from all that material. Uh, Another couple passes over there is where my corn plot starts. There's some definite standability differences or stalk integrity differences, I guess is a better word for it. Um, so we're gonna, we're gonna harvest up to that, but leave it. We're gonna run that tomorrow. We've got plenty to do without doing that today. You can see the purple there is where my plot starts. This is also the first pass through the field where we can kind of get a good feel for what the yield is gonna do. Um, based on the ends and what we did in that other field, oh yeah, that's gonna be a problem. Stuff all bunching up on there. We'll feed in, but slowly. Anyway, uh, that first field where we just did the endros there, I uh, got a total from the green cart scale compared to what the combine said. We were off by 3,000 pounds. Um, so I put an adjustment in, it was 11%. So I put that adjustment in, so this number right here should be accurate for where we're at. 
or at least a heck of a lot closer. Um, you know, obviously all I've done is endro so far, but we're at 181 average. I expect this to be in that 220 to 240 range by the time we get done out here. We'll see. Oh yeah, yeah, this is fun. Good times. It's not too often that Dad runs the cart for me, and uh, he's done a fair amount this fall, but I'm sure he's well, itching to get in here. So uh, we've got our truck full, and the cart's gonna be full enough when we get up here uh, at the end of this round that I'm gonna we're gonna park everything, go back, and get the dryer started, and then we'll keep shelling and filling stuff up. The dryers are the bottleneck, so it's important to get them running. All right, well, we're unloading the truck. The second one, we emptied, I emptied the grain cart. Time to fire up the burner. I believe everything is correct. Uh, what's our hours? 395 and ready? Oh, wait, 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 wait. Gas valve, yeah, it's open. Okay. Oh, there it's full. Start! combine we'll run cart until we get stuff filled up again and then uh, have to go and unload it that's the problem here it's a little bit slow going especially with Phil still hauling beans um, we just we have to stop and unload trucks but as long as the dryer is moving we're going as fast as we can and it doesn't really matter so my corn plot is in right here I need to find a stake and um, make sure we're in the right rows that might be difficult Okay, so here's the first rows that are not part of the plot. I kind of peeled the husks back on the first of each of uh, the eight rows so that Dad can find them. There is a nice big white guest row right here, so he should be able to see that. This is a plot entry moving forward. Well, we're gonna have a row of shame. This row here should be in that plot. I'm off by a, uh, a row. We can fix that in the plot. We'll just measure off that and adjust the length because of it. Um, but yeah, I found the stakes and we're off a row. Dang it. So we're gonna try and load all these trucks in two dumps. I'll bring enough for, uh, you know, for, for filling it in two dumps. Um, so this landlord happens to have a couple of small used grain bin or old grain bins here. There's, there's one on the other side that you can't see right now. Um, one of the other neighboring farmers actually uses those bins. I think they put beans in them or something. We used to, but decided not to anymore. And so the neighbor does. And they got a truck in here. They're trying to use their auger and fill the bins, which is um, it's fine, but it adds a layer of complexity to getting trucks in and out. And everybody having to kind of work in tandem here and make sure that <laughs> we're out of each other's way. There now you can see that other bin. We got their auger set up there. Must have that truck empty because they're leaving. But yeah, yeah, that, that complicates things a little. Running a grain cart in corn is much more exciting than in uh, beans. Actually, running a grain cart in corn is probably one of the most exciting and fast-paced jobs of anything we do in a tractor or combine on the farm because you are hustling half the time. Occasionally you get a short break where you get to sit and watch and then you got to be on the ball all the time. It's um, There's a lot of bushels coming off of here. So you've got to remember, you know, in those beans that we were running and you saw how many bushels we had to truck and cart and do all of that stuff over the last couple of days. Uh, in corn, I'm expecting three to three and a half times as many bushels per acre as in soybeans. Uh, and yeah, we're 20 foot head versus a 40 foot head, so you're not combining them near as fast, but the bushel's still coming off the same amount of acres, and and uh, we gotta we gotta go. There's gonna be a lot of truckloads coming out of here. Uh, right now, in these short rows, it's like three to four rounds fills a truck. We've already got a truck full. Like I I got nowhere else to put stuff. We gotta hopefully Jack's gonna bring us another truck and swap it out. Um, 
but yeah, when we get in the long half mile rows here, which we're almost to, it's gonna be probably two rounds or maybe just over a round in a truckload. Like that's that's a lot of corn. We're getting some more end rows done in the back of the long rows here. Um, we've got a camera inside this green cart so I can see the back end and when we're filling. It's on a magnetic mount and it gets all twisted around. So I'm gonna go fix it. Well, I gotta find Right there. I don't know how it got there. It's not where I usually have it. I usually put it right there. And then we point it up. The idea is that you can see this area back in here to help fill the cart a little better. That's probably good. I need to find a, I don't know. I, I need to attach it better than just the, the magnet. The magnet's great for quick and able to move it, but it's not quite permanent enough. Let's try that. Better. I need to spin it back a little bit, but that'll work for now. We're loaded. We'll get back over to the truck and then we'll have to go swap them out or whatever. Dad's gonna shell as far up as he can, but uh, I don't think he's gonna make it because he didn't get the combine empty. Yep, it's a good problem to have, but it's gonna make progress pretty darn slow because we just can't get rid of the corn fast enough. When Phil gets done hauling the beans, that'll help because then he can haul trucks while Dad and I shell. Well, Jack did come bring us the other truck and they're both full and well, the grain cart's half full. So he said the dryer has shut off already, which is awesome. That means we're gonna be able to dry stuff fast. So we're gonna take everything back and top off the second dryer. I'll explain that when we get back there and uh, we'll, we'll keep those moving because that's the priority. So this is the bin we started in. It is empty. We dropped that first batch. That bin is now loaded the dryer and uh, it's running. Uh, that one's only a 24 foot diameter bin, so it only holds a thousand bushels in a batch. This one is a 30 foot diameter and it holds uh, 1500 in a batch. I know I've talked about these before, but I'll just go ahead and show you again how this works. Basically, we have a false floor at the top of this bin and we can hold corn up there and we blow hot air up through underneath and it dries it out. There's this false floor on the top. You can see we're filling it up now. So once this gets full, We'll start up that burner. There's the corn going in. There's some bands in there to help keep it level, but it works pretty good. That's why we have ex uh, lots of vents around this bin. It's because we're blowing a huge amount of air through it. And we gotta let the air out. You can see the top of that other bin over there. There's corn clear up to the top, but we've only put a thousand bushels in the bin. We just, we hold it up there. And then there's a burner over there where Phil is and it blows hot air in underneath that floor, comes up through the grain, out through the vents in the top, forces the moisture out of the corn. This corn is relatively dry, 19%. I think we had the last one, it was 18.4 or something like that. So it doesn't take real long to dry. Less than two hours per batch, which means we'll be able to get a lot of batches through and that's good. That's gonna be a problem. We got a major antifreeze leak. This piece here is a nipple that uh, one of the major hoses on the radiator antifreeze lines attaches to and it broke. Good thing it's the International in the third truck and we don't really need it, but it is nice to have down here. All right, well, Jack and Phil are gonna get that truck moved out of the way, the trailer unhooked and put the truck in the barn. Uh, Dad and I are going to keep shelling here a little bit. Phil did get all the beans hauled in, so our overhead was empty of beans, and now it has wet corn in it. Uh, that's what we use as our wet storage, because we don't have a wet bin down here. So we can shell a little bit, but the pace is just a little slower here, because as long as the dryers are moving, we can't go any faster. Um, so that's the goal, is to get enough wet corn around in the next hour and a half to fill the dryers again. But really we want to get the wet bin, the overhead full, and maybe the trucks so that we can stay here a little later after we're just done shelling for the night and keep the dryer moving or start them up in the morning and get stuff moving before we get some wet corn around. So um, that's how it's going to work. It's just a little slow, but we should still be able to get through this fairly quickly. 
especially since it's dry and the batches are only going to take two hours or less. Some good news though, my Uncle Jack is, um, seriously, he is a retired heavy truck mechanic. Uh, he worked for a company for, I don't know, 33 years or something as a mechanic, third shift, so um, he's perfectly qualified to take that radiator out of that truck and put a new one in. Um, so we're going to let him do that. The trick is going to be finding one. Uh, that is a 95 International 9200 truck. And um, I don't know. I imagine that you can get them, but we'll have to get it out and see what we can find. So we are trying to uh, dig a hole here in the middle of this field so we can dump closer to the trucks and just to make it easier to dump going towards the road. Uh, one negative of an eight row head though is we can't dump on the go until we have at least two passes off because there's not enough room. If he swung his unloading auger out, I need to drive on that corner in order to be underneath it. So I gotta drive to the back and we unload and then he shells up and we'll unload at the front and then we can go from here. Um, yeah. If the sun wasn't at that angle, you might actually be able to see something here that was cool, but the sun is kind of in the way. Hey, um, ConAgra Brands, what kind of a con job are you trying to pull here telling me that there are five servings in this single serving box? I don't care how much one fifth of it is. Tell me what's in the whole box because nobody eats a fifth of it. What is that? Yeah. Turns out making it from one end of the field to the other in half mile long rows is a bit tricky. Turn slow, Dad. Turn slow. We better get right right there so he can start dumping as soon as he gets into the uh, corn there. That is, wow. That's an awesome thing when uh, you can't make it from one end. Good thing it's flat. Yeah, good thing it's flat, he says. <laughs> well, that's a good thing. And go, go, turn it on, there you go, not going to spill, oh we made it. So yeah, that, that, that leads to another problem, right, so the combine empties relatively quickly, um, but he has to be empty, empty, when we get to the other end of the field, uh, so we kind of got to ride with him here the whole half mile, and we just leave the unloading auger on and go. Which brings me to another point. Uh, we have an eight row head. How do guys with 16 row heads make it from one end of the field to the other if I can't make a full round with an eight row? At some point you gotta be able to break through the middle here so you can unload on the go, right? You have to. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know how they do it. I don't even know how we would do this with a 12 row to be honest. it would be a giant pain in the butt and it would take forever just to get the corn away from it so we'll just keep our eight row head and smile and haul all our bushels away so we are going to be able to shell full corn way faster than we can haul it even especially in drying it but um phil just came in a little bit ago and brought us an empty truck and i immediately filled it because i had a very full grain cart um and yeah so we can make this round in probably one more. Actually, I don't even know that we'll make one more because this cart full is uh, not fun to be pulling through these fields. Um, it is drier than what we were fighting a few days ago, but I'm definitely finding the soft spots with the grain cart when it weighs 60,000 pounds and I'm trying to pull it through the field. So um, yeah, we'll probably take a break after this round and get trucks unloaded and stuff and maybe get the dryers refilled. We'll see where we're at. Maybe I'll go get some dinner. And then we'll come back and fill stuff up one more time probably. For some reason that light on the end of the unloading auger is pointing like straight up at the end of the unloading auger. We're gonna fix that when we get to the end of the field here. Okay, see what I brought for you? I didn't get to fly it today because we had to charge stuff, but maybe tomorrow. I've uh, gotten a little lax in my filming this afternoon, but we're done for the night here. It's uh, 8 o'clock. We've got enough wet corn to keep the dryer moving tonight and tomorrow morning, get it started. So we're going to head back. Dad and I are on our way back to Waldron. We had a good day. We got like 50 acres of corn shelled. It's really good corn. Um, 
and it's pretty dry. So it's good. I made it back to Waldron, Dad and I did. I left my coat in the combine, I think. No good. Um, I'm not going home yet. We're gonna keep working. So, it is not horribly late yet, but it is late enough that my wife and kids are already in bed. So we're gonna go do some tillage for a while. Let's get the ripper running. The uh, uh, fertilizer supplier has gotten some fertilizer spread for us. And uh, we've got a few fields that can be done, so we're going to go work on one for a while. Actually, we're going right across the road. So we're running our 2730 Ripper here. It's uh, a, what do we got, nine shanks? Yeah, nine shank. And um, right now we're in one of the fields we had double crop beans in. Um, they spread the fertilizer and we don't need any lime on this field. The, the one uh, across the lane over there, we need some lime on. They said they'd have it done by Wednesday. They were gonna haul tomorrow, so uh, it's not done yet. So we can't rip that one, but we can do this one. And there's like 55 acres here. I don't think we'll get it done tonight, but we're gonna run for a while because the more we can get done, the better. Okay, well, everything seems to be working pretty well here. Uh, did a little tweaking on my depth and stuff. We're running our uh, Gen 4 4240 display here, so I can adjust the uh, depth of the ripper, the discs, the closing discs, the pressure on the basket, all that stuff right from this display here. I also modified some of my run pages, so uh, we've got that. We've got this one here showing me a map and with some of my guidance settings and totals and stuff. And then uh, this one where I got some shortcuts to adjust everything. Um, should work pretty good. I figured out how to get the recording working. That was not, but it is now. Hard spot. Pulling sort of slow here. So we are pulling, uh, we got it set for nine inches deep on the ripper. Um, the discs I set down a little bit because we have a lot more trash here with the wheat stubble that we had. Because this was double crap beans, so we have the wheat stubble and then the bean stubble on top of that. So there's a fair amount of trash but you can see in the passes next to it that we've already done we are burying it very well uh, it looks to be working up really nicely actually uh, I'm pretty happy with that um, most of it's pulling pretty easy except we're find a few hard spots or going uphill like we are right now but then it, it goes all right so uh, I've got the tractor in the kind of automatic power shift mode or whatever the heck they call it where I tell it how fast I want to drive so 6.6 and I might dial that up a little bit and it selects the gear and engine RPMs to get us as close to there as possible when the when the tractor just can't pull it any faster because the ripper pulls so hard uh, it just it just does the best that it can basically um, this is a 9510R it's 510 horsepower and we're using all of it uh, this green graph right there is our power meter when it's at the bottom of it that's 35% when it's at the top of it, that's 100% and we're even going a little bit over getting some of that extra power bulge out of the tractor. You can see our slip is at about, well, 11, 14, 50. Yeah, see we're finding one of them hard spots now and the tires are spinning. Um, but yeah, going pretty well. We do have more weights that we can add to this tractor. There's a, a rack of suitcase weights that go between the tires and the back uh, that if I feel like we need them, we can put them on. We needed them worse with our old uh, sunflower chisel plow that we used to pull with this tractor before we got the ripper. This pulls easier and it doesn't, the tractor doesn't bounce and power hop like it used to. Um, so we don't need those weights quite as much. Uh, they might get put on, but we're gonna go without for right now. There is just something super relaxing about tillage at night. Late in the fall, dark, Got to get stuff done before it rains again. Just sit here and go back and forth. I can do this for a long time. Oh, falling mostly. Um, I just noticed that my trail looks a little off here. I think we got something plugging up one of our rolling baskets. So we got to get out and take a look. See what's going on here. I need some light. Uh, well, that one turns. 
and that one turns. I guess it's okay. Sometimes we get some rocks or something caught in there and they stop turning and I think that's probably what happened over here. But when I turned on the end, maybe it worked itself free. I don't know. Something caused a pattern to be off there. All right, so we're uh, moving along here. We're almost up to the corner of this woods. There are still some windrows and tall grass and stuff over there that uh, they never got bailed and then I didn't, when I did the double crop beans, I never combined over there because well, there was windrows and stuff. Um, I would kind of like to run the mower over those, spread them out as best we can before we try and run the ripper through them because I just don't think the ripper is going to be very effective. Um, so when I get to the corner of the woods and to that point where I've got to start going through some of those, I'm probably going to quit. It's a uh, quarter to 11 now. Uh, so we've been at this for a little while. We're, we're covering some ground. It says we've only done 17 acres. I feel like I've done more than that, but I don't know. Maybe that's right. Let's see. A different map. That one. Yeah. There was a round in there that didn't record, but I guess that's I guess that's probably about right. We've got a long ways to go here yet. But still, getting uh, a few hours in is a good thing. Um, I think Dad's going to stay home in the morning and run the ripper for a while, try and get a field or two done, and then come down to Berkey in the afternoon tomorrow to help us shell corn. So we'll keep getting some done. I suppose since it's almost 11 and I'm going to get home late, I should probably start editing my video for tomorrow. Otherwise, I won't get any sleep tonight. All right. Well, I got up to those windrows that need to be um, mowed and stuff. So I was willing to work for another hour or so. It's about 11 now, but I don't want to go to another field tonight because... I'm not going to be there long enough to justify that, and since I don't want to do any more on that one, we're going to go ahead and call it quits for tonight, but we got some stuff done there. That's that's good. Every little bit helps. Okay, I am uh, heading home. Thanks for watching today. Hope you guys enjoyed this one, and uh, if you have any questions, comments, leave them down below. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and uh, hit that like button for me. We're getting close to 19,000. I'd like to get to 20 by the end of... Uh, the year here so you know subscribe uh more corn harvest tomorrow we're gonna run the plot off tomorrow morning uh we're gonna keep the dryers moving and keep stuff going down there dad's gonna do a little tillage and uh then be down in the afternoon and and we'll do what we got to do also i got to drone out so hopefully we'll get some drone footage for for you tomorrow so all right night everybody